This is Your Money with me, Michelle Martin. I really wanted to do this show because I recently spoke with a pet provider and um, they have married pet technology and veterinary care. And they shared with me that in the U.S., people bring their animals to see vets about two to three times a year. But here in Singapore, people only take their animals to see vets maybe when they really need it. So why is that? I wanted to find out. Uh, and the provider told me, well, it's because there is, isn't the same kind of pet insurance here as there is in the U.S. So how much do you know about pet insurance in Singapore? And will it help you save on big vet bills is my question. My guest today is Pamela Chong. She's Associate Manager of Legacy FA. She's one of my favorite people to speak to about insurance and you'll hear why. Because she really has a, a brain for numbers and a heart is with that as well. You love animals, right Pam? Yep, I do. <laughs> All right, Pam. So we're thrilled that you're with us to help us understand. When I had a pet ten years ago, there wasn't any pet insurance. I don't know what your ex what your experience has been with pet insurance. I totally agree. In my life today, I have two pets. Before I had a golden retriever and a Shih Tzu. Never have I ever heard of pet insurance myself. Yes, until I put you on this project. Thank you so yes. much for <laughs> kindly helping us out. So is there any pet insurance in Singapore? Are there really only four choices? Okay, first and foremost, thank you, Michelle, for uh, getting me on this project to share about pet insurance today. And to your question, yes, there are only four different insurers covering pet insurance. And uh, they are namely your uh, AIA, CIMB, Liberty Insurance, and Aon Singapore. Now, CIMB pet insurance is underwritten by Sompo Insurance, while that of Aon Singapore is actually underwritten by Income Insurance Limited, what we used to be known as NTUC Income. Now, the limited choice available, I would say it could be a good thing as well, because lesser choice makes decision making much easier. This is true. This is true. <laughs> I'd rather have a broader range though to pick from when it comes to things <laughs> as important as my pets. But I get the point that the less choice you have, the faster you can move towards action maybe. Okay, so basically only four. Mm -hmm. My next question, Pam, is, is there any insurer that's going to help me with these large veterinary bills? Well, this is a very difficult question, Michelle, because the four different insurers actually provide very different kind of coverage. It really depends on the kind of coverage that, you know, poor parents decide to get, um, whether they determine the sum insured, what is important. But more importantly, it is good to know that for any claims, there's actually a co-payment and a deductible applicable per incident before the medical expenses will be reimbursed. Now, what do I mean? So let's say my Shih Tzu had a fall and no accidentally injure the fall leg. This incident by itself is one incident and I have to make the deductible. Now for the second time within a year, if she gets, you know, probably skin allergic to an insect bite, that incident is considered second one. And again, I will have to make a deductible payment before the medical expenses can be reimbursed. And this reimbursement is usually a percentage of the total bill, not 100%. So it is really good to refer to the fine print for more details. Okay, so what are really the key differences between the types of pet insurance available, Pam? Yeah, so there are plans that amount the four that covers only accident-related expenses, meaning to say, you know, your pet meets an accident on the road, you know, get knocked out by a car. And there are plans that cover for medical expenses as well. But with regards to medical expenses, they go into two different areas. One is for surgical related treatments and another is actually inclusive of non-surgical treatments. So some insurers cover the pet also up to only a certain age, that's one to a max of 13 years old, while the other can cover a pet up to the lifetime of your four kids. Oh, wow. Lifetime. Mm -hmm. What kind of premiums are we looking at for pet insurance here, Pam? I would say it really differs depending on the coverage. So I would say that, like I said before, I own two dogs in my life. You know, 
the very first expenses that you spend on them is really the initial buy. It doesn't come cheap. Back then when I bought my Shih Tzu, it was for only 700 But I'm reading off the internet. Now it could cost you easily a four to five digits. And not forgetting their diet, their grooming, vaccinations. A lot of expenses are involved. So as much as pet insurance don't cover all this, you know, I think the premium um, is not that much of importance, but rather what are the kind of medical bills that you know poor parents really want to ensure the pets against well look at this face i mean if you saw this <laughs> just humanly possible <laughs> to protect <laughs> that um i i had an animal and i didn't realize how important pet insurance was until i was talking to a vet after my 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 little jd passed on and he had liver issues mm. okay mm. and we there is no symptoms that show up early on, only yes. end stage. So by then, there's nothing you can do about it. But my friend who's a vet was saying, you know, if we had started this whole process of going maybe two to three times a year, maybe we could have detected it through random blood tests, you know, just like how we have a full health screening every year. But we don't think about it for our pets because mm -hmm. pet insurance in my time, at least, when I had my animal, did not exist. But today we're finding out more about the four different kinds of pet insurance here in Singapore. Pamela Chong is my guest. She's Associate Manager at Legacy FA. And by the way, if you have a question, you can put it through to us at Facebook or on YouTube as well. Just plonk it in the comments and we'll try to answer it for you. Uh, we've covered the four choices here in Singapore whether or not there is an insurer that will help you with large vet bills and the key differences between the types of pet insurance available when we come back after this ad you know you might be thinking my animal is prone to cushing's disease i saw this tiny little teacup poodle it was <laughs> absolutely adorable and then i looked into it and this breed is prone to pushing cushing's apparently and then there's some animals i had a pekingese and boy did he have dents in the eye all the time because he had a really flat face and huge eyes and every time he put his face in the ground to sniff something another dent so maybe it's glycoma maybe it's um dents in the eye hip dysphagia we're going to find out what sort of insurance exists out there with some of these common ailments so that's coming up after this stay ahead with money fm 89.3 hi want to enjoy higher interest in your savings it's easy credit your monthly salary purchase insurance or investment products apply for a housing loan saving your hard-earned money shouldn't have to be this complicated with cimb savings accounts earn high interest of up to two percent per annum with no multiple conditions plus join us a new preferred customer and get bonus interest of up to one percent to grow your savings visit cimb.com.sg slash simple savings conditions supply insured up to 75k by SDIC your money only on money FM 89.3 Welcome back to Your Money. I am exploring pet insurance, the kinds of insurance that exist here in Singapore. Will they help you out with those big vet bills? I remember I was shocked when I found myself face-to-face -face with a four-figure vet bill for the first time. That happened two years ago. So, Pam, is there any with comprehensive coverage that I can get that will just help me with these huge medical bills for pets, for my dog? <sighs> I guess there are opportunities that we can get all this covered. But I think, Michelle, you pointed out something that's uh, very important, like for your late dog that passed away. You know, sometimes as poor parents, it comes at a very late stage then to we discover that there's something that's going on. So a common dilemma I realize for pet owners is, you know, when the fur kid is diagnosed with a medical condition, whether or not to proceed with the treatment actually is attributed to a few factors. Now, first, definitely is the stage of uh, the diagnosis, which usually I always say is always at the late stage. Second, it's also the consideration of how the quality of life for the fur kid would be after surgery. So, for example, what my Shih Tzu who had, uh, you know, she was uh, crippled from the hind legs behind. We were considering if she should go for the surgery and afterwards she actually has to be put on the wheelchair. So if she were to be on that, what are the causes going to be involved? And, you know, knowing in Singapore, we don't have the luxury of staying at home the whole day. She probably will be alone at home and how is she going to move about besides, um, you know, having the wheelchair? And last but not least, the high cost is involved. 
So having a pet insurance definitely aids the cost of concern. Uh, the cost concern. I have a friend who owns a French bulldog, was diagnosed with intervertebral disc disease, and the treatment cost her fifty nine thousand. My sister, who stays in Australia, actively adopts dogs. So she bought pet insurance for every of her four fur kids. One has within this year claimed as much as ten thousand on his medical bills, and that's wait, 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 but COVID. that's in Australia, right? That's Correct. not and that's based on as well. the Singapore claims. Correct, but it right? is the same way how the insurance works in Singapore because there's always co-payment as well. In so Singapore, what kind of co-payment are we looking at, Pam, for the pet insurance? We, Easily, it starts off at probably 20%, but then again, it depends on the different insurers again. And this co-payment also um, is affected by the age of entry. So if you would start insuring your pet at an older age, it would mean you have to co-pay more because the likelihood of anything happening is actually higher. Okay. Um, Zachary, oh, thanks for commenting. Keep your comments coming through as well. We're on YouTube or in Facebook Live. If you're a pet mummy or a pet daddy and you have a question on pet insurance in Singapore, shoot them through to us. Why not? Do you think it makes more sense to save on the premiums given there's four types only? Does it make more sense to save on the premiums and use that savings towards your pet's? eventual vet bills rather than spend money on the premiums for pet insurance here in Singapore, given what you are seeing? Well, I guess whether or not to get a pet insurance for a fur is a very personal take. So if you're someone who's very disciplined and saving and you have more than enough savings in your bank account, you may choose to really wear your luck because you really have no idea if you know, things would happen or would not happen. But if you're someone who's more of a spender, that would say getting the pet insurance might be a good consideration because the coverage is actually going to be able to help you in the lump sum medical bills as paid off. Now, premiums concerns are legit. We have our everyday expenses, no on basic necessities and all. A good way to view such premiums for pet insurance is that, you know, instead of paying one lump sum at one go, we are paying in installments over the lifetime of our pets. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And, you know, fur kids, unfortunately, they don't have what we call a MediSafe account. <laughs> Neither can poor parents be utilizing our MediSafe for their medical expenses. So it is all nothing but 100% hard cash. So instead of having to cough up that huge amount, if you have pet insurance, you're actually cushioning some payable, you know, hefty bills that's going to come. So what kind of exclusions apply? We know that if you're going to get health insurance, that if you're diabetic, for example, very difficult to get your hands on certain types of insurance. What sort of exclusions apply to pet insurance? Now, pets are just like humans. Any pre-existing conditions before or during the applications, they're not covered. And again, exclusions varies across the four insurers. There can be exclusions to certain breeds, um, the hereditary conditions and also congenital conditions. Again, you know, it's the fine prints that really matters for the four insurers that everybody should go and look at it. However, what may be interesting to note is that there is a possibility to have hereditary conditions covered. For example, mm -hmm. we actually have one insurer that cover up to six specific hereditary conditions, out of which like glaucoma. Glaucoma is something that is very common for cocker spaniels, poodles and even beagles, hip dysplasia, Occurs in usually larger breeds like you know golden retrievers, Rottweilers, and Labradors, even the IDD, the intervertebral uh, intervertebral disc disease, which is common in the French bulldog, like what happened to my friend's dog and Shih Tzu's. All this can be covered, but however, to be eligible for such coverage, the fur kit has to be insured before the age of six years old, and there is a waiting period of 12 months, okay, after the plan started, before such coverage can be effective. The next thing that um, I think it would be good to know is that fur kids have to be sterilized in order for them to be covered for sickness related to their reproductive organs and hormonal skin conditions. So where the fur kids are not sterilized upon application and they are, they are done so after the application, Poor parents can actually write it to the insurer to update them with a vet report such that all these covers can be included for them. So besides knowing what coverage are included, I think the other one you have to know is that, you know, the basic terms and conditions, 
your pets have to be microchipped before they can be insured. Okay. They have to complete all required vaccinations and they must okay. not be a working pet. Okay. And lastly, in some cases, the insurer may require the pets to go for an examination with a oh. licensed vet before oh, they can be for you. Yeah. I didn't know that. Okay, we have a question from Ian. Ian, thank you so much for your question. Pam, is there an upper age limit if you want to buy insurance for your pets? Can they be too mm. old to qualify? I would say it's, um, there's no specific limit, but I would strongly encourage to get a pet insured uh, as long as they're younger than six years old because it's what I've covered just now. If you're beyond that, the hereditary conditions in the particular insurer you're looking at is covering may not be applicable once your pet is too old. So, I'm mean, younger is definitely better, but you haven't yeah. seen anything in the fine print that excludes for age? Mm, not that I know of. Not that I know of. And in fact, um, the older, the entry age, uh, uh, the first application, the higher is the co-payment involved before any medical bills can be reimbursed. Okay. Great question there. Thanks very much, Ian. Send your questions through to us. We're on Facebook, so you can just type in your question if you're a fur parent, as I have been throughout my entire life. Love these things. I would try and find out if pet insurance is for you. Are there, are there any sort of breeds that are excluded, Pam? Um, particularly to only those that's covered for accident only, we are looking at like your people terriers, the Rottweilers, and even German Shepherds, they may be excluded from uh, that particular insurer. Okay. Okay. Let's talk about cancer. Um, increasingly common amongst animals as well, not just humans. Yes. Have you seen anything in terms of cancer coverage for pets? Um, there is um, coverage. Uh, in fact, one of them by uh, Aeon. Singapore does cover for chemotherapy. I think that's great news for all poor parents out there because as we all know, even for human beings, chemotherapy is costly. So uh, this can be covered by that. But um, again, there's a limit as to how much it is and it depends on the plan that you decide to insure your fur kids against. Okay, so you could get a plan that covers chemotherapy. So it could help with management of a very chronic disease then. Right, mm -hmm. these are bills yeah. that will you will keep accumulating, but there is co-payment involved at every stage. Mm -hmm. Is that right? Yep, correct. Okay. Okay. So here's a here's a question from Jingi: Is there is pet insurance applicable to dogs only? Are cats covered as well? What about cats? Depending on where they live. Let's say let's take the broad question: Are cats covered, Pam? Thanks for the question, Jingyi. I think that's very important to be asking. And definitely, yes, they are not only covering for dogs, they are covering for cats as well. So you really have to check about the insurer, which are the ones that's providing coverage for cats as well. Great question. Nice to know that our friends with claws are included as well when it comes to pet yeah. coverage. So we were talking about cancer coverage. Very interesting to hear that chemotherapy is covered. Um, any sort of other post illness therapy i don't know physiotherapy for animals have you seen anything interesting like that being covered mm, currently there are no coverage uh, that's extended for post treatments i would say like you know physiotherapy or even hydrotherapy but, mm, but, hydrotherapy. but okay yeah. Um, yeah. i think with any surgical treatments there's always post visits to the vets well good news post visit to the vets they are covered Oh, very good. Excellent. Yes. Because you need that. that. The expenses is not cheap. <laughs> I know. Uh, what about common common eye issues, uh, glaucoma? You know, that affects okay. animals as well, dogs and cats. So glaucoma, it's uh, one, like I said, it's uh, one of the hereditary conditions that's covered, but that um, will have to have a one-year waiting period for the insurer before they cover. And um, I would say, again, it's not every insurer that's covering so you have to really read through the policy wording is extremely important. I cannot emphasize how important that is. Okay, but there are, there, there is are. coverage for glaucoma, which is going to affect your pets because yes. they're going to age. Hopefully they will live with you for a long, long time. 
Yeah. Uh, what about blood tests? The last time I was at the vets, the blood test took me out. I was like, wow, just go <laughs> look at this panel. It's incredible. Um, things like that. Covered by pet insurance or no? Okay, so blood tests, I think uh, it, it really depends. If it's considered medically necessary, I will deem that, you know, there's possibility that we can get reimbursed. So once again, it, it really depends on how and why this blood test was called for. Mm. Mm. So it could fall under coverage. It could, it could. It could be covered. It could. It could. Yeah. Okay. But if yeah, you're talking it, about routine checkups, no. Your routine checkups for vaccinations, the health... Mm -mm, I'm sorry, that goes like, you know, you, it's going to be on your own pocket. Okay. PAM, AIA, <laughs> CIMB, Liberty Insurance, AL, they're the only four insurers that offer pet insurance here in Singapore. Now help yes. us understand what are the sort of factors that we should be thinking about before we decide if pet insurance is for us. I think that's a great question, Michelle. You know, if I have a pet now, I think, you know, it's, it's so tiring on me to decide which of this four insurer I should go to. So I think first we should uh, research on the breed of the dog or the cat that you have. What kind of medical conditions that they may be more susceptible to. Speak to your vet to have a better understanding because having a hereditary condition doesn't necessarily mean that your fur kit is guaranteed to contract that condition. There could be preventive measures that you can take to minimize the potential of contracting. And, you know, if you brought it for the pet shop, maybe you might want to ask about, you know, the fur kids' actual parents, if they have any existing health conditions. That's going to help as well. Secondly, are you an owner who is very regimental about routine checkups? Now, back then, I didn't have the time, like Michelle said. We probably bring it only, what, once or twice a year? We don't go conscientiously, you know, every single month or once every two months. And are you updated with all the vaccinations that the pet is supposed to have? Next, the living conditions of your fur kid. Are there any potential for your kid to be jumping up and down your furniture when you're not at home, resulting in dense sustaining as in uh, an injury? For example, my shit zoo ginger, that poor girl probably jumped off the sofa and incurred, you know, some injury to the kneecap. And that wasn't, uh, uh, it doesn't appear to us until much later. And it was too late to salvage the condition. So then again, another question would be, if you're staying in a landed residential, how easy an, an access to grass patch does your fur kit have? Because, you know, the higher the, the accessibility, the higher the potential that they are exposed to insects and insect bites, can probably cause skin allergy reactions as well. So all these factors all in place, I would think that, you know, it is good for poor parents to consider all this before deciding if pet insurance is really necessary. Okay, before I let you go, I'm from Money FM, so we have to talk about the money aspect of this. In terms of <laughs> premiums, am I talking about thousands a year or hundreds a year for pet insurance? Now, um, the pet insurance is easily below a thousand a year, oh. so it is not say extremely costly. It did, like I say, it depends on the coverage that you may want to have for your uh, fur kit. I just was on a chat with one of my ex colleagues. He was mm -hmm. telling me he was so lucky to get his pet insured because after purchasing, the poor boy sustained exclusions. And that's how things can happen. So, no. So, wait, hold on. Uh, so, he was covered? He was covered by the pet insurance? He, or he, he had exclusions. Not. He had exclusions basing on the condition while uh, uh, doing application because the, the boy had four. Oh, that's And he injured the kneecap. Yeah. So, it, it's very, um, I would say it's very unforgiving. There's Do you no think it's a good idea to start with a visit to the vet to get your dog fully checked out? Mm, our deep is actually very good because like I said, there's an insurer that actually requires the vet examination. There is an insurer that, uh, that requires a vet examination that you pay for? They don't pay for yeah. it? You pay nah. for it. Uh, Ian's you final question it. is what kind of ball ballpark premiums are we talking about? So in terms of hundreds, 500, mm. thousand? I would say it's less than 1,000. The highest that I've seen was probably roughly about 750 a year. Okay, great. Ian, great yep. question again. Clearly a dog lover, Ian. 
fabulous. Thank you so much for listening to us. And thanks, everybody, for your questions. We're out of time, so we got to leave it here. Pamela Chong is from Legacy FA. Pam, that was great. Thank you so much for joining me. Thank you, Michelle.